الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to start the introduction to the history and the formation of Arabic grammar. How the Arabic grammar started, what was the reason why it started, and what was the phases it went through, and the stages in which it went through, and who are the scholars who wrote in this field? And what are the different schools in the Arabic grammar? And how do you reconcile between those different schools? All of that, inshallah ta'ala, will be taken in this module, bi'idhnillah al kareem But today, inshallah ta'ala, I want to speak about a couple of points, inshallah ta'ala. The first thing I want to speak about is the importance of learning the Arabic language and how important it is. I'll also be speaking about, inshallah ta'ala, this belief that many have that the Arabic language is hard, it can't be learned, it's not for me. Where these claims come from? and what the response are. And finally, I will mention practical steps if you take, you can truly, inshallah ta'ala, gain good understanding of the Arabic language and grasp the Arabic language, inshallah ta'ala. But the first thing I want to start, start with is the importance of the Arabic language. The importance of learning the Arabic language. The Quran that we have, my beloved brothers and sisters, is in this language. From all of the languages that we see in the entire world, that was the only language Allah chose to convey His message, was in what language? It was in the Arabic language. No other language. And the reason why he done that is because the Arabic language is the best of languages. And remember these five, because they're very vital. The best language that Allah chose was the Arabic language. The best language, and Allah chose it to convey his message. And that's which language? The Arabic language. And Allah chose the best of mankind. Nabiullah Muhammad. The second one is Allah chose the best of mankind. And who was the best of mankind? Nabiullah Muhammad. The third one is Allah chose the best of places to send the first portion of the Quran to. And that was in where? Mecca. And Allah chose subhanahu wa ta'ala. the best book to Nabi Lai Muhammad. This book is better than all of the previous books that came. And the fourth one is, uh, sorry, the fifth one is the best time. It was in the month of Ramadan. In which night? Laylatul Qadr. Those five have all been gathered for the Quran, for us. We have the best prophets. We have the best language. The best time. The best book. On the best of mankind. My beloved brothers and sisters, the Arabic language is the language of every Muslim. It's the language of what? Every Muslim. Every Muslim's language is the Arabic language. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية he said اللسان العربي the Arabic language 
is shi'arul islam it's the symbol of islam wa ahlihi and the people of islam their symbol what they're known for is the arabic language wal lughat min a'dham sha'ir al umam allati biha yatamayyazun languages are one of the greatest things that distinguishes nations from one another So the Arabic language is a what? It's an Islamic symbol, remember that. It's your language. Your first language is the Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sent this Quran down, He sent it at a time as He always was subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah always sent miracles on prophets. And the miracles that he sent on each prophet was what? The best thing at that time. Whatever they thought that they reached the pinnacle in, Allah will send a prophet that will come with a miracle that would be mind-boggling to them. Nabi Allahi, Musa, magic was the, the thing. It was all about magic. And Allah gave Nabi Allahi, Musa a what? He gave him a miracle which was that his stick would turn into a thu'ban, a big snake. Nebula Isa's time, it was medicine. That was what they were, they reached the pinnacle in. So Allah gave Isa ibn Maryam the ability with his permission subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring the dead to life again with whose permission with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission meaning everything they came with that prophet would come with something that was greater when he the poet he said jaa nabiyuna bil ayati fa ansaramat wa ji'tana bi hakim ghayra munsarimi ayatu kullama tala al mada jududu yubayyinuhunna jamal al itq wal qidam Every prophet, he came with a miracle. And when that prophet went, the miracle went with him. Except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The miracle he came with was the Qur'an. And of course he did come with other miracles, but the biggest of them was the Qur'an. Even that though he's gone sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the miracle of the Qur'an is still what? Still going on. Sah? Still continuous, hasn't stopped. Every time you read the Quran, it, the gems and the jewels that are in it keep coming out. Ayatu kullama tal al mada judadu yubayinuhunna jamal al itqi wal qidami. Every time and the time that goes on, the Quran just amazement comes out from it. It didn't perish, nor did it go. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quran came at a time when the Arabs were at the pinnacle of eloquency. Well, there were Arab poets, Shu'ara poets, and they would stick their poetry on the Kaaba, which was named Mu'allaqat. What does a Mu'allaqa mean? Mu'allaqa is something you tie somewhere, you dangle it from somewhere. The first of those Mu'allaqat, I mean, the first of those poets was a man by the name of Imr Uqais. Imr Uqais was 150 years between him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there were 10 of them. They were the chosen ones. They would come to the Kaaba, or they would come to the, the seasonal time when the people come to the market and to buy the Suq of Uqada and they would speak their poetries. So their poetries was written in ink of gold and it was stuck onto the Kaaba. That's the time that the Quran came down. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tahadda al-Arab. He challenged them. He said, come with something like this. And Allah said in the Quran, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ In another ayah, Allah says, قُلْ لَئِنِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَن يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِرًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, if you are in state of doubt of this Quran, if you are in doubt of this book, and you don't believe it's from Allah, come with one of its chapters. One surah, the smallest surah, surah Al-Kawthar, surah Al-Asr, come with the likes of this. Call your witnesses. In the other ayah, what did Allah say? قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَةِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ If they all come together, عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ To come with the likes of this Qur'an, they will never be able to come with the Qur'an. Allah says, وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا If they even aided one another and they helped each other. Are we all together, brothers? In another ayah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, وَلَقَدْ ضَرَبْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ We have given examples and parables, examples in the Qur'an. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ The reason why we gave these parables in the Qur'an is that the people can ponder over it and look at it and analyze the Qur'an. And then Allah says, قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا غَيْرَ ذِي عِوَجٍ It's a Qur'an that doesn't have no crookedness in it. You know what some of the scholars, they said, the reason why it doesn't have crookedness in it is because it's, it's in which language? It's in the Arabic language. It's the only language that can convey the message like that. The Quran doesn't have no, it's a Quran which is upright. It's consistent. Quran and Arabian, غير ذي عوج لعلهم يتقون. So you can come with what? So you can come with taqwa. Some of the scholars, they took from that, through the Arabic language, people can really gain taqwa from it. After Allah mentioned the Arabic language, He's mentioning taqwa in the same context. Are we all together, brothers? Because to really gain iman boost from the Quran, it cannot fully be accomplished in any other language other than the Arabic language. Allah says in another ayah, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينٍ this Qur'an is in what language? Arabic. Clear Arabic language. Again, no other language can be spoken clearly other than the Arabic language. And that can convey Allah's message the way He wants it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than the other Arabic language. So can you fulfill the obligation of pondering on the Qur'an if you don't know the Arabic language, brothers? Can you come with the ayah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا أَفَلَا يَتَدَّبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْرِ All of those verses are saying, why do they not ponder on the Qur'an? So to ponder means you understand what you're pondering on. If you don't know that language of the Qur'an, you can truly not come with the ability to really ponder and to take benefits out of the Qur'an the way it should be. ولذلك Al-Baqilani, look what he said, something very good. He has a book called Ijaz al-Qur'an. He said something. He said, قَدْ بَيَّنَّا We have clarified أَنَّهُ لَا يَتَهَيَّعُ لُمَنْ كَانَ لِسَانُ غَيْرَ الْعَرَبِيَةِ The person whose language is not the Arabic language, meaning he doesn't speak the Arabic language. He doesn't know the Arabic language. So he's a foreigner. He doesn't know the Arabic language. مِنَ الْعَجَمِ وَالْتُرْكِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ أَنْ يَعْرِفُ إِعْجَازَ الْقُرْآنِ They cannot know the miracles in the Quran. Isn't the Qur'an the miracle that we have today? This miracle, you cannot truly have the ability to understand it if you don't have the Arabic language. إِلَّا بِأَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ الْعَرَبَ قَدْ عَجَزُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ The only thing that you can say is, I know that no one can come with the likes of the Qur'an. And that's the only way that you know it's a miracle. But you don't know it's a miracle because of the meaning that is in it. Because you are what? You don't know the Arabic language. You don't know the Arabic language. وَلِذَلِكَ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ He said in a hadith, Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, مَا مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ There was no prophet. There was no prophet. مِن نَبِيٍ إِلَّا قَدْ أُعْطِيَ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ مَا مِثْلُهُ آمَنَ عَلَيْهِ الْبَشَرِ Every prophet, Allah gave him a what? A miracle for his people to follow him. Nabi Allah Muhammad is saying, every prophet, and I told this before at the beginning, every prophet was given miracles, ayat, for him to use so the people can follow him. And look what the Prophet said. 
وانما as for كان الذي اوتيت وحيا the one that i was given was a revelation اوحاه الله الي this quran is the one i was given فارجو and because of this quran i hope ان اكون اكثر متابعا يوم القيامه and because of it i hope to have the most followers the day of judgment so what miracle did the prophet point towards which language is this miracle in it's in the arabic it's in the arabic language ولذلك النبي الله محمد one of the things allah said that he gave him uniquely of all of the other prophets was what he said bu'ithu bi jawami' al-kalim i was given jawami' al-kalim do you know what jawami' al-kalim means it means I could speak little in wording but powerful in meaning. Eloquence in his speech. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the Prophet. He said, Qul li fil Islam qawla. Oh Messenger of Allah, say to me in Islam, means say something to me that I will not need to ask anyone after you. I just tell me something I will not. I just want you to give it to me. What did the Prophet say to him? Qul amantu billahi thumma astaqim. Say, I believe in Allah and be what? Look how small that is. Say, I believe in Allah and be what? Steadfast, that's the whole religion. I believe in Allah and be steadfast. In small sentence, what did he say? Sallallahu alayhi wa so much. Volumes can be written on it. Sah? Alayhi salatu wasalam. ولذلك ابن رجب الحنبلي has a kitab called فضل علم السلف على علم الخلف. In this book, do you know what he talks about? He talks about the knowledge of the salaf compared to the knowledge of the khalaf, which is us, the latecomers. And you know what he says? The virtue of the early generation's knowledge compared to the late ones. Do you know what he said? The difference was the early generation they would speak little, but have a big effect in what they say. We would speak for a long time. But really, what do you take from it? Not much substance. So it all goes back to brothers what? The Arabic language. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, look what he said. He said, مَعْلُومٌ It is known أَنَّ تَعَلُّمَ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ Learning the Arabic language وَتَعْلِيمَهَا And teaching it فَرْضٌ عَلَى الْكِفَايَ It's a communal obligation. There has to be a group of people who are out there teaching the Arabic language. Or if not, we're all sinners. فرض كفاية what does it mean? إذا قام به بعض سقط عن الباقين. If a group people group of people stand up to teach the Arabic language, then that's good. But if no one teaches the Arabic language, we are all sinning. It's a communal obligation. Look what he says. وكان السلف the salaf of this ummah يؤدبون أولادهم they used to discipline their children, beat them. We're going to see some examples later. On what? على اللحني If they grammatically spoke wrong. Umar used to hit his children. He used to beat them if they didn't. And he would discipline them if they grammatically spoke wrong. What would Umar do if he saw people who don't even know if the difference between ba and ta? Here they, he's disciplining his children on what? What is he disciplining them on? They speak in Arabic, but they're just doing a grammatical mistake here and there. فَنَحْنُ إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَ carries on saying, فَنَحْنُ we are مَأْمُورُونَ We're commanded أَمْرَ إِيْجَابٍ It's obligatory, mandatory. أو أَمْرَ اسْتِحْبَابٍ Or it's highly recommended. أَنْ نَحْفَظَ الْقَانُونَ الْعَرَبِي That we learn the Arabic grammar. That we learn the principles of the Arabic language. وَنُصْلِحَ أَلْسُنَا and that we correct our tongue al ma'ilati anhu that has deviation in it the incorrectness that's in our tongue that we get rid of it so it can be protected for us the way to understand the book and the sunnah to understand the quran and the sunnah you have to protect your tongue from arabic mistakes are we all together brothers is that it? He went on to say in another place, Rahimahullah, I'lam know an اعتياد اللغة Using the Arabic language consistently and continuously 
Brothers, pay attention to this. This is very powerful. You asiru fil aqli, it affects your intellect. Learning the Arabic language will affect the way you think. Okay. Wal khuluqi wa dini, and it will also affect your manners, and it also even affect your religion. Just by speaking Arabic, your aql will increase. He said. Your religion will increase. And your manners is going to increase. Ta'thiran qawiyan bayinan. Ibn Taymiyyah said, it will affect greatly, clearly. Three things. The way you think, your aql. It will affect what? The way you carry yourself and your manners. And it will also affect your religion. Brothers, if you don't know the Arabic language, you are not allowed to do ijtihad. One of the conditions of ijtihad is that you know the Arabic language. Ijtihad, what does it mean? It means independent reasoning. To go to the Quran and the Sunnah and to extract from it rulings, you have to know the Arabic language. You are never going to be a mujtahid. And you'll spend the rest of your life being a muqallid, a blind follower. And a muqallid, brothers, is what? A muqallid is like a dead body in front of the person who's washing him. You are nothing. Somebody else is controlling your religion. For the rest of your life, somebody is going to be telling you what your Lord is saying to Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Arabic language is vital, brothers. If you want to go to the sources directly, if you go to the books of... Usul al-fiqh, this is what you find. They add to the conditions of each tihad learning the Arabic language. Subki says in Kitab al-Ibhaj, when he speaks about shuroot al-mujtahid, he says, ilm al-arabiyyati lughatan wa nahwan wa tasrifan. You have to know the Arabic language. You have to know grammar. You have to know morphology. Morphology is what? Binyatul kalima. You have to learn the construction of words. These are words in Arabic language. فعل, فعل, فعل. What's the difference? These are what? Morphological. The word and how it's scaled according to the scholars of the language. You have to know this. It's a condition. And Abu Shaq al-Shirazi in his Kitab al-Lumah, he says the same. He says, وَيَعْرِفُ طُرُقَ الَّتِي يَعْرِفُ بِهَا مَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ Suyuti said something very powerful that touched me, really. And I want all of you to pay attention to this. Jalaluddin al-Suyuti said something very powerful. Please listen to this. He transmitted a statement from Al-Imam Shafi'i. Who said this statement? Al-Imam Shafi'i. Suyuti mentions this in his kitab, Sawnul Mantiq. He said that Al-Imam Shafi'i said, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i. Just to mention Shafi'i, Shafi'i was a hujjah, proof in the Arabic language. Are you with brothers? Al-Imam Shafi'i, he was a what? Hujjah fil lugha the scholars of the language used to reference him. Like Abdul Malik ibn Quraib, al-Asma'i, who we're going to see later, who was imam in the language, he said, I took from Shafi'i the poetry of the people of Hudayl. I read it from Shafi'i. al Imam Shafi'i. Shafi'i, when he was a young kid, when he finished the Quran, he was two years old when his mom bought him to Mecca. His father died, Al Imam Shafi'i. His father died when he was very little. He didn't see his father. His mother raised him. His mother brought him to Mecca and he was two years old. He was two years of age, Al Imam Shafi'i. His mother didn't even have money to pay for his madrasa. So he went to the Kutab. The teacher said, You don't have to pay anything, just learn 
He learned the Quran until he sat in the seat of the teacher. He used to teach the Quran. And then after that, when he finished the Quran, Shafi'i went to the outskirts of Mecca. Where did he go? To the outskirts of Mecca. Why did he go to the outskirts of Mecca? To sit with the Bedouins and take from them what? The Arabic language. The pure, clean, untampered with Arabic language. Especially the people of Hudayl, that tribe, he went to them. He sat with the people of Hudayl and he took from them. Keeping in mind, Shafi'i is Quraysh. He's, he's a Muttalibi. Abdi Malaf had four kids. Abdi Malaf, how many kids did he have? He had four sons. From the sons is Hashim. Who came from Hashim? Nabi Muhammad came from it. Second child was what? Muttalib. Who came from Muttalib? Shafi'i. Shafi'i goes back. Him and the Prophet meet in Abdul Malaf. Imam Shafi'i. Hashim, Muttalib, Mal and uh, uh, Nawfal, and Abd Shams. Huh? Sah? Those four were brothers. Hashim and Muttalib, which is Shafi'i and who? The Prophet, are the two closest ones than the other two brothers. There's a history behind that if you read the seerah. When Allah talks about Ahlul Bayt, He is referring to Bani Hashim and Bani Muttalib, not the other two brothers. Who was from Abdi Shams? Uthman Na'afan. Uthman Na'afan came to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, why is it four children who come from Abdi Malaf, four of them brothers, how is it two? They get one fifth of the spoils of war. And the other two brothers don't get nothing. They're, they're, they're dealt with like the rest of the people. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Bani Muttalib, Shafi'i's family, they did not forsake us before Islam and after Islam came when Quraysh and everybody boycotted Nabi Muhammad and his uncle Abu Talib in the valley, in the Shi'b. The two tribes that were boycotted in the Shi'b was Bani Hashim and Wahu. Bani Muttalib, they were both in the ship. All of the other tribes, they boycotted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of that, they got upper hand. Ibn Shafi'i was from that tribe. Even then, it didn't stop him from learning the Arabic language. He sat down, brothers, and he learned the Arabic language. And you know what he said? He said, I learned the Arabic language so I can serve fiqh. Billahi alaykum, ponder on this. I learned the Arabic language so I can become a good faqih. That's why I learned the Arabic language. So you have to understand the Arabic language, brothers. Look at what Imam Shafi'i said here. Shafi'i said, and I really want everybody to write this and memorize this. It's a very important statement Shafi'i said. Shafi'i said, Ma jahilan nasu. The people did not become ignorant about this religion. And they did not dispute one another. إِلَّا tarkim It's because they forsaked لسان العرب The Arabic language وَمَيْلِهِمْ And they turned towards إِلَى لِسَانِ أَرْتَطَى لِيس And they turned towards the language of Aristotle Greek And they turned away from what language? The Arabic language Two things he said, pay attention to this. He said, Ma jahilan nasu, the people did not become ignorant of their religion. Walakhtalafu, and they did not dispute one another and become groups. Illa li tarkim lisan al Arabi. It's because they left the Arabic language. And one of the reasons why deviated groups came is because they couldn't understand the Arabic language. They couldn't understand what the Quran was saying. If you read the books of Aqidah, you find a lot of the times the scholars would say, this group, min al ujmi utu. What does that mean? Ignorance of the language brought this problem to them. Ignorance of the Arabic language threw them into what, brothers? 
into aqidah problem. ولذلك, a Bedouin man, one time he heard a man recite the Quran. And some of the scholars they mentioned this was one of the reasons why the Arabic grammar was placed. He recited the Quran and he came to the ayah. وَأَذَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ That's what the ayah is, right? This man, instead of reading it as وَرَسُولُهُ He read it as وَرَسُولِهُ He placed a kasra there. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's read it with the dhamma. وَرَسُولُهُ Let's read it like that, which is the way it is. If we read it correctly, it means Allah and His Messenger are free from the hypocrites. And if we read it as a kasra, it becomes Allah is free from the Messenger and the hypocrites. This is a Bedouin man, he knows the Arabic language very well. And so when he heard that, the man reading the ayah as وَرَسُولِهِ he said, did Allah free himself from the Prophet? Is Allah free from the Messenger? If that's the case, so am I. I free myself from the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All because of a way the ayah was read. And the issue reached Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he was informed. And he said, from that day onwards, Umar banned anyone to read the Quran if he didn't know the Arabic language. Just a kasra. Just a kasra. Nothing big. The whole entire meaning changed from Iman to Kufr. Sah? I mean, of course, the Bedouin man is not a disbeliever because he's ignorant. But look how the whole entire verse changed from what it was saying to what it turned into. All because of a what? A grammatical mistake. And there are many examples in the Quran that are like that. For example, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi prevented the companions from saying Allahu. and what else were they saying before that washa muhammad right Allahu. if allah willed and the prophet are you with me what did he prevent them from he said drop the wow just that one letter drop the wow exchange it with what thumma a two letter word from shirk to tawheed. One letter shirk, two letters tawheed. Does that not show you how important the language is? It does, brothers. He said, don't say and use the wow because the wow shows that you're connecting Allah's will and the Prophet's will together. Are we together, brothers? So it's very important that the language is learned. Walidalika, look what Shaykh Islam, sorry, Suyuti, Jalaluddin al Suyuti, look what he said as well. After he brought the kalam of Imam al Shafi'i, look what he said. He said, Waqad wajadtu. Suyut, he said, I have found. Qabla al Shafi'i, before Al Imam al Shafi'i. Meaning, I saw before Al Imam al Shafi'i some of the Salaf, some of the scholars before Shafi'i. They said and they alluded to Asharu ila ma ashara ilayhi. They alluded to what Shafi'i alluded to which is that the ignorance and the dispute, where did it come from? Ignorance of the Arabic language. They alluded to it. And look what he said. The bid'ah. Where did it come from? Where did the bid'ah come from? He said, One of the places it came from was the ignorance of the Arabic language. Are we all together, brothers? الرحمن على العرش استوى 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 What changed its meaning, brothers? And made it استولى استوى according to the Arabs is على وارتفع Every Arab knew that When did it change? From استوى to استولى Are you with me, brothers? Am I making sense here? ولذلك learning the Arabic language is a vital issue here I'm going to bring you guys some examples of how the scholars used to point towards staying away from grammatical mistakes. 
and how the Salaf were harsh with anybody who spoke grammatically wrong, let alone ignorant about the Arabic language. Ibn Abi Shayba narrated in his Musannaf bi isnadin sahihin an nafi'in an ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, annahu kana yadribu waladahu ala lahni. Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to beat his child. On what? On grammatical mistakes. Just like his father would do it. Abdullah ibn Umar, if he heard his son speak wrong, he would beat him. So he can correct his tongue. Ubay ibn Ka'bin, the great companion, he said, Ta'allamu al Arabiya, learn the Arabic language. Kama, the same way, Ta'allamun hifd al Qurani, the way that you learn the memorization of the Quran, learn the Arabic language. Allahu Akbar. The way that you learn and you memorize the Quran, what do you need to learn? Learn the Arabic language. It's really embarrassing, and I hate to put you all under the spotlight. But it's really embarrassing to be living in, in an Arab country and you don't speak the Arabic language. It's in, embarrassing, wallah. Especially, this is your language, as I said. The Arabic language, it's your language. It's the language of every Muslim. It's not the language of an Arab. It's the language of what? every single muslim and you speak english and french and japanese and you ch germany and you don't even speak the arabic language the language in which in it if you learn the success of this world and the hereafter is connected to, connected to it because of the quran and you can't read you don't understand it are you with me brothers if you go to the ayah وَتِلْكَ الْأَبْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِنَاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ If you go to the ayah in Surah Ankabut, right? If you go to that ayah in Surah Ankabut and you bring the tafsir of Ibn Abi Hatim, this ayah, what does it say? Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِنَّاسِ In this Quran, we give examples, we give parables. Allah says, وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا No one understands it except those who have knowledge. Amr ibn Murrah, he said, if I come across a verse in the Quran and I don't know what it means, Bakaytu ala nafsi, I cry on myself. What do I do? I cry. I've just come across a verse. Allah is talking to me, He's giving me a parable, He's giving me an example, and I don't understand it. I cry on myself. Imagine somebody who spent 40 years, 30 years of his life and he doesn't know the Quran and what it means. He's talking about one ayah here or there. Wallahi brothers, get up and learn this language. Give time to it. Study it. Or else you're going you're gonna to be losing out a lot. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what did he say? Ta'allamu al-fara'idha wal-lahn. Learn inheritance. And learn the Arabic language. The grammatical Arabic. Learn it. Was-sunan. Learn the sunnah. Kama ta'allamuna al-Qur'ana. The way that you learn the Qur'an. All of that, learn it like that. The way that you memorize the Quran, learn the Arabic language. It's as important. Umar is saying, memorizing the Quran, memorizing the Sunnah, memorizing inheritance, and memorize the Arabic language is the same. He's saying, all of it, do it. Ibn Abdul Bar, he said, Allahnu, Lahan means, Ma'rifatu wujuhu al kalami wa tasarrufi wal hujjati bi. You have to learn how the Arabic word is used. The forms and the ways that it comes in. Abi Ja'far, he said, Min fiqhi rajuli, a man's fiqh is irfanuhu lahna, that he learns the Arabic grammar. That shows you that man is a faqih, if he knows the Arabic language. To the extent, brothers, some of the salaf, they considered it, if you read a hadith grammatically wrong, that you will fall under the hadith of the Prophet مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَأْ وَمَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Anyone who lies about me deliberately, let him prepare his place in the hellfire. You've lied about the Prophet. If you read a hadith grammatically wrong, what have you done? You've lied about the Prophet. How have you lied about the Prophet? Because when you're reading the hadith, you're saying that the Prophet spoke like, spoke like this. 
and the Prophet never done a grammatical mistake. Look what Al Asma'i Abdullah Abdul Malik ibn Quraib said. In the Akhwa Fama Akhafu ala Talib al Ilmi, the thing that I fear the most for a student of knowledge is that if he doesn't learn grammar and yet hula fi jumlati kawli nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man kajaba alayya mutaamidan falyataba wa maqadahum in the nar. That he might fall under the hadith. Lianna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yakun yalhanu famahma rawaita anhu hadithan wa lahanta fi kadabta ali. Every time you read a hadith and you do a grammatical mistake, you have lied about the Prophet. Because you're saying that the Prophet said it like this. And if you lied about the Prophet, what's going to happen to you? Prepare your place in the what? In the hellfire. Prepare your place in the hellfire. Al Imam Ibn Abdul Bar. Ibn Abdul Bar. Sorry, Imam Khatib al Baghdadi. Sorry, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He has a book called Jami'ul Jami'. Rawi wa Adab where he talks about the student of hadith, the hadith student who wants to learn the hadith of the Prophet. He placed a chapter in that book of his. What did he do? He placed a chapter in there. And in that chapter, what did he mention? He said, learning the Arabic language. He said, At-Targhibu fi ta'allumu nahwi wal arabiyati li ada'i al-hadith bil ibarati sawiyya. Learn the Arabic language. Before you even speak about the Prophet Hadith, before you even read it, learn the Arabic grammar. Historically, when you look at Islam, the non-Muslims used to love to learn the Arabic language. The non-Muslims used to like it. Times have changed. The Muslims have forsaken the Arabic language. And where have they run to? The English language. Historically, the glory was learning the Arabic language. Al-Imam Al-Hariri, you listen to the story. Al-Imam Al-Hariri, who has a maqamat. But he said in his kitab, Durrat Al-Gawas, Fi Awham Al-Khawasi. Listen to the story. And a Yehudiyan, a Jewish man, Sa'ala Aba Uthman Al-Maziniyu. A Jewish man, he came to Aba Uthman Al-Mazini. A Jewish man. He came to this great scholar of the Arabic language. What did he ask, for? What did he ask him? He asked him, and you Quri'ahu. He said, please read on me Kitabu Sibawahi. Sibawahi, we're going to be taking who he is. He's the father of grammar. And he goes, he's the leader of the school of Basra. And then Imam Ali ibn Hamza al Kisaina, he's the what? The Imam of the people of Kufa. And we're going to speak about that historically later, inshallah ta'ala. He said, can you, the Jewish man said to Aba Uthman al-Maziniyu, can you read on me? Can you read on me what? The book of Sibawi. And he gave to him And he gave him how much? Hundred what? Do you know what the dinar is, brothers? Yeah, dinar is what? Dinar is gold, brothers. He gave him a hundred gold. Today, that is thousands of, thousands of dollars. He put it in front of the great noble Imam. And he said, teach me. فَرَدَّهَا about Uthman al-Mazini pushed the money back to him. وَلَمْ يَفْعَلْ And he didn't do it. وَكَانَ مُحْتَاجًا And he really needed the money about Uthman al-Mazini. Really needed that money. فقال له أبا العباس المبرد another great imam in the language أبا العباس المبرد was another imam in the language we'll mention him إن شاء الله تعالى as well he said to him لما لم تقرئه why didn't you not read it for him I take the money you know you needed the money why didn't you just take it فقال he said إن في كتاب سيبويه in the book of سيبويه is what آيات من القرآن there are Quranic verses in it. فَلَا أُقْرِئُهَا يَهُودِيًا And I'm not going to read it on a Jewish man. Isn't that Islam, right? The honor of Islam. That a Jewish man would give money, this much money to learn what? What would he do? To learn this language. And what happened? In عَكَسَةِ الْمَوَازِينَ 
the scale went upside down now. We are paying that much money to learn what? The English language. We are learning and we give time to learning the English language. And we've chosen to turn away from the Arabic language. So here inshallah ta'ala I'm going to move on to the next part of my uh, session today which is the claim that the Arabic language is hard. The claim that the Arabic language is hard. The people who push this brothers to make the Arabic language seem like it's hard and it cannot be learnt and subhanallah it's like you're moving a mountain whereas if you look at it was the the colonials when they came to the Muslim Arab countries and the Muslim countries are you with me brothers and they made jokes about the Arabic language if you want to beg learn the Arabic language wahakada in our country that's the things that were spread by the Italians and the British when they came in especially the Italians if you want to beg learn the Arabic language if you want to insult somebody learn Italian if you want to um, be educated, learn the English language, wahakada, the ayat, you know, to belittle the Arabic language. Arabic language is only for begging. So what will happen to the person? It will become they won't see the language to be something very important. So because of that, you see people from different Arab countries that can't speak to each other. They don't understand each other because they've been all given different dialects and they've been turned away from the what? the fusha and some places when you go to if you speak correct Arabic language to a taxi driver an Arab when you finish he'll say Sadaqallahul Azim Hakada Wallah you know they will laugh at you they will mock it they said this is the kalam of Hassan al-Basin and Awza'i what are you talking about? Are you with me, brothers? So what is it that allowed this to spread? In order for us to overcome it, it's important. To respond to it, we have to first of all know what are the causes for this claim and this false claim. Number one, try to write this down, inshallah ta'ala, is the way that it spread, that the Arabic language is hard and it cannot be attained, is the following reasons. Number one, the passion within the Muslims died out for the Arabic language. The people, they lost ghira, jealousy, love, and passion for the Arabic language. That this is, this is your language. When somebody says that to you, what will happen to you? You wouldn't let it go. And when somebody tells you that the Arabic language is yours, it's your, it's the shash, it's from the what? The sha'air of Islam, the symbols of Islam. And what did Allah say in the Quran? The symbols of Islam, are you allowed to belittle it? Huh? Can't. My country, one of the ways that they came to us was that they belittled the Arabs and they belittled the what? The Arabic language. Belittling the Arabs and belittling the Arabic language is belittling the Prophet and the language he spoke. Are you and your brothers? Dangerous. What is it? It is dangerous. So this, they take away from you the ghira. What's the best translation for the word ghira in the English language? Protective jealousy leaves you. Number two, believing every single allegation that's made. People just believe it without investigating. Somebody will come up to you and say to you, Grandma, don't even go that path. Go learn this subject. You don't, you don't even say, okay, let me see it for myself. You don't do it. So people just believe the allegation that the Arabic grammar is, the, is hard. It creeps into you because you don't investigate. You don't look for it, into it yourself. Are we all together, brothers? So because of that, the, the allegations that the Arabic language is hard, it spreads. It spreads. The third reason why this allegation spread was because Ba'fu, the weakness in manahij in nahu the curriculums and the syllabus that were made for the Arabic language if you look at the syllabus that are taught in some institutes the Arabic language syllabus is taught 
so weak, excessively weak. The person doesn't have no exercise, uh, you know, the weakest curriculum is picked, it's not chosen, it's not handpicked, and because of that, when the person sits in one, in one or two classes, what happens? He thinks, mm -mm, this is not for me, and he walks away. Number three. The fourth one, huh? Ha. Four is the teachers that are teaching it are not qualified. They themselves don't know the subject. They are unqualified teachers who are teaching the subject. And so when they come into the classroom, they don't come with that passion and that drive and that motivation. They scribble things on the board. Do you understand? No, it's up to you. And they leave. And so what happens? If the teacher who's teaching it doesn't like the subject or is not passionate about it, of course the students are what? Not going to feel the same. Walidalika. That's very common. If you go to the Thanawiyah, the secondary schools, and you go to the Mutawasid and the Ibtidai, and you look at the teachers who teach in the, the Tahfid and the Madrasas, what type of teachers are they? They don't really care, they're just... But when you go to university, and you go to these Harvard and Princeton and Cambridge and Oxford and whoa, so neat and tables and everything, cups, the teacher comes with passion and drive and... Are you with me, brothers? But the Quran class and the Arabic class, everything is what? Quality, nothing. The way it's done, savage, the teacher doesn't care. This does make the person not feel inclined to learn in the Arabic language. The fifth is the amount of lectures that are given are little in number. For example, fiqh might be 20 subjects, 20 hours. Grammar might be 4 hours, 5 hours. Enough amount of lessons will not be given to grammar. It's the least. It's reduced. And so the teacher is told, take this big curriculum and teach it in a very short period of time. Are you with me, brothers? But all of the other subjects, good time is given to it. Also, the lack of ability to apply the Arabic group that you learn in the class to apply it out on the streets. There's no way to apply it. Even if you did learn it, when you come out, you're going to have to speak what? Not Fusha, right? The standard Arabic will not be spoken, sah? So the person is learning um, And when he comes out, he, can't, he doesn't say that Are you with me brothers? He's done and هَذِهِ But when he comes out, he doesn't use and هَذِهِ That's the user العمية. So how can we overcome this? And what's the way to practically overcome these problems? Number one, to think that the Arabic language is hard or it's complicated and it cannot be studied is like maths. It's like any other subject. And no subject, just because it's hard, is it abandoned? Why is it that only Arabic grammar is abandoned because it's hard or it's seen to be hard if we accept it for the sake of argument that it's hard? We don't hear anybody saying maths is hard, so yeah, don't do it. Or physics is hard, don't do it. Rather, the ratio, the ratio of people who are going for these academic sciences which are much harder than the Arabic language are high. But those same people will say to you what? Well, I don't know if, you, if it's like that back home in India, like in my country where I'm from, if the person is bright, he's sent to academic sciences, engineer, medicine, doctor. If he fails in life, become an imam. So, is it like that? Huh? Same. Uh, 
وَلِذَلِكَ The person who is the Imam is a failed person in life. He couldn't do anything. So he said, I might as well just memorize the Qur'an. هَكَذَا صح? وَلِذَلِكَ One time I was in a lecture of one of the mashayikh and one of the students said, Shaykh, I find it hard to revise in the morning. The Shaykh said something very, I was shocked when he said it. He said, seeking knowledge is not for you. Go for maths and science. And Then when he finished, I said, Shaykh, why did you say that to him? He said, if we take people like him on board, they're going to be giving fatwa to the people. We need people who are sharp. Because those are the type of people they used to be when, they, when it came to seeking Islamic knowledge. We're encouraging the wrong people to become something, he said. <laughs> Failures in life. And we're saying, do it, do it, do it. He's got a point, sir. Huh? Oh. And I don't totally agree with it. But the truth is, it's like that. The person fails in everything. He just says, okay, I'll, just, I'll be the imam of my local masjid. So the Arabic language, brothers, it's like any other science. It just needs you to think Focus and put hard work in. Like in brothers, the Arabic grammar is broken into two, two types. Write this down. The Arabic language is broken into how many types? Two types. Janib, a type which is Janib Amaliyun Tatbiqi. Application. The first type is, it is practical. It's application. It's that you have to speak correctly. This one is definitely not that hard for sure i mean i speak english and if somebody does a grammatical mistake in the english language i can definitely pick up pick on it and say look that's a grammatical mistake don't say that but if you sometimes ask me how do you know this is wrong i would say to you allah but i know it's wrong so the janib amaliyun tatbiqi sah we all know that right Generally, in every same might apply to you in the, your, your, your mother tongue language. You may know if anybody speaks wrong, you say, Yo, stop saying that, that's wrong. But if you ask you grammatic, grammatically, explain to me why I'm wrong, you'll say, I don't know, just listen to me. Sah? Correct? So this one is not what majority of the people are talking about when they say the Arabic language is hard. Because that's easy, that just needs you to what? It needs you to immerse, immerse with the people who are speaking the language and just keep talking, 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 and you'll pick up. Like in the second one, which is Janib Ilmiyun Daqiq. This is Navari. It's Janib Ilmiyun Navari. Theoretical. Oh, yes. Why did you say Ja'a? Zaydun and not Zaydin or Zaydan. How do you say Zaydun? Ha. Are you with me, brothers? Why did you say Ja'a Zaydun? Ra'aytu Zaydan. Marartu bi Zaydin. Look at, listen to the word Zayd. What's happened to Zayd? Ja'a. Just focus on Zayd. Ja'a. Zaydun. Ra'aytu. Ra'aytu Zaydan. Marartu. Bi Zaydin. What happened to Zayd? It changed, right? This is what? Ja'a ja fa'ilu. Fa'ilu. Zayd. Ja'a, uh, ja'a, sorry. Zaydun is a fa'il, sahih? And it's the fa'il, fa'il is a subject. Ja'a, let's start with ja'a. Ja'a fi'ilu maadhi mabniu ala al-fat la mahalla lahum ila al-a'rab. Zaydun is a word. Fa'ilu, ja'a, marfu'un, wa alamatu raf'ihi, dhammatun, dahiratun ala akhirihi. Ra'aytu, ra'a fi'ilu maadhiyun mabniu ala al-sukuna, mabniu ala al-fat, however you want to say it. Atta' dhamiru muttasil fi mahalli raf'i fa'il. Zaydan maf'ilu bih, mansubun, wa alamatu nasbih. Al-Fathatun Dahiratun Ala Akhirihi Are you with me brothers? You, don't worry if you don't know it now You will inshallah ta'ala Marartu mar, Marartu we can say two ways We can say Fi'lun madiyun Mabniyun ala sukuni la mahalla lahu min al-i'rab Atta' dhamiru muttasi fi mahalli raf'i fa'ilin Ba' harfu min huruf al-jarri Zaydin ismu majroor Wa alamatu jarri Kasratun Rahiratun 
على اخره that's why this is zaydun this is zaydan and this is zaydin صحيح grammatically did that make sense to all of you guys yeah no don't worry that's the part that may be hard for some people are you with me brothers lakin an arab might look at that and know what you say if it's right or, or if it's what or if it's wrong he will know that but the point brothers is this is the part that's generally hard for some people that's the point number one I want all of you, all of you to remember inshallah ta'ala the second way to over, to make the Arabic language easier and to make people enjoy it brothers is the methodology the methodology of learning the Arabic language brothers can make it very exciting if a correct manhadiyya is taken and when it comes to the Arabic language the person should take these books first al ajramiyah you can say ajrumiyah however you want to say it both ways it's said second book that you should study is mutammima mu tamima mutammima al ajrumiyah am ajramiyah the third book that you should study is lamiyah uh, al-af'al which is sarf وَبَعْدُ مَنْ يُحْكِمْ تَصَرُّفَهُ يَحُزْ مِنَ اللُّغَةِ الْأَبْوَابُ وَالسُّبُلَ فَهَاكَنَ ضْمَنْ مُحِيطًا بِالْمُهِمِّ وَقَدْ يَحُوِ التَّفَاصِيلَ مَنْ يَسْتَحْذِرُ الْجُمُولَ Sarf, morphology. Then the person does قَطْرُ النَّدَى وَبَلُّ الصَّدَى By Ibn Hisham. Five, the person does الْفِيَةُ بْنُهُ Those are the five books in grammar. Easy, simple. And this one is قَالَ مُحَمَّدٌ هُوَ بْنُ مَالِكِ أَحْمَدُ رَبِّ اللَّهَ خَيْرَ مَالِكِ مُصَلِّيًا عَلَى النَّبِيِّ الْمُصْطَفَى وَآلِهِ الْمُسْتَكْمِلِينَ الشَّرَفَى وَأَسْتَعِينُ اللَّهَ فِي أَلْفِيَّةِ مَقَاسِدُ النَّحْوِ بِهَا مَحْوِيَّةِ تُقَرِّبُ الْأَقْصَى بِلَفْضِ مُوجَزِي وَتَبْسُطُ الْبَذْلَ بِوَعْدٍ مُنْجَزِي وَتَقْتَضِي رِضًا بِغَيْرِ سُخْطِي فَائِقَةً أَلْفِيَّةً بِنَ مُعْطِي وَهُوَ بِسَبْقِ الْحَائِزٍ تَفْضِيلًا مُسْتَوْجِمٌ ثَنَائِيَ الْجَمِيلَ وَاللَّهُ يَقْضِي بِهِبَاتٍ وَافِرَةٍ لِي وَلَهُ فِي دَرَجَاتِ الْآخِرَةِ 1000 lines in, in grammar that's the last book that's the methodology that you take when you study grammar are we all together brothers am i making sense here the next point is finding a teacher who's qualified who knows the subject and enjoys teaching the subject are we all together brothers wallahi when the teacher enjoys the subject and he loves his subject and he finds joy in it i promise you he will make the students enjoy it are you with me brothers it depends the it depends on the teacher who's teaching it if he loves it and he enjoys it and he likes it but if he's just there to take his monthly salary huh and that's all he's waiting for the last shakka you're not going to enjoy that subject and you're not going to learn it because he doesn't care he does not he does not care also brothers is to know that the one of the greatest um, the greatest scholars in this language a lot of them were blind they couldn't even see for a subject that really requires observation and looking and thinking and everything a lot of them were blind from them for example is Al Imam Ali ibn Ahmad ibn Sayyida he was a Lugawi Nahwi Andalusi. He was Darir, blind. Ma'adarika is from the great scholars of the Arabic language. The same applies to Al Imam Muhammad ibn Mukarram al Ansari, Yusuf ibn Sulaiman al Andalusi, Sa'id ibn al Mubarak, who was known as Ibn Dahan, Abdul Samad ibn Yusuf, Abdul Kareem ibn Ali. All of these were Aimma in the language and all of them were blind. And this brother shows you it's really how much effort that you put in something. The poet he said, 
Some people, Wallahi, it shocks me. You want to wake up one day and just become a grammarian. The poet, he said, You want to wake up, you wish to wake up one morning and become a faqih who's, who's strong in his arguments. And then he look what the poet said. He said, Craziness, it comes in different ways and shapes and this is one of them. Junoon. To wake up and just become a grammarian. Or to wake up and to become a scholar overnight. That doesn't happen and it hasn't happened for anybody. Listen to this story. And I'm going to conclude there inshallah ta'ala. And this story is Khalid ibn Abdullah al-Azhari. Khalid ibn Abdullah al-Azhari. Khalid ibn Abdullah al-Azhari kana waqadan lis-suraj. He used to, he used to, they say, he used to light the candles in the university of Azhar. Are you with me, brothers? In Azhar, when the students would study, he was a man who had a good heart. So what he used to do is he used to walk around with the, and he used to pour the tea for the students and put the candle on for them. And ah, that's what he used to do. Khalid ibn Abdullahi al-Azhari. One day what happened was, as he always used to do that, one day what he did was, by accident, he, the candle fell onto a student's notes. And it fell onto him. When it fell onto him, he said to him, Ya Jahil, you ignorant individual. What are you doing? Look where you're... Khalid ibn Abdullah al-Azhari, that hurt him so much. He's here caring for the students, wants to khair and good hand. He said to him, you ignorant individual. What are you doing? Look where you're pouring. I'm going to look what you're doing. So what did he do? He stopped. That day onwards, he did not do that anymore. What did he do? He went towards the Arabic language. Hatta bara. Until he became the Seba way of his time. He has one of the best books in Arabic language. From them is At-Tasrih bi madmoon at One of the best books he has. He, this book I'm telling you, the last book, you know what he did to it? He did I'rab of the whole poetry. The 1,000 lines of poetry of Ibn Malik's Alfiya. He did I'rab of it. He grammatically analyzed every single word in the Alfiya. Are you with me, brothers? And he has a kitab called one of the best books. It's called Muwassil al-Tulab. Muwassil al-Tulab, some scholars call it. Some scholars call it Muwassil al-Tulab, which is a sharah of Qawaid al-I'rab by uh, Ibn Hisham al-Ansari's kitab. He explained it. He's a, he became an imam. And this, brothers, what does it bring us to? It brings us to how these people, when they were told, go for this, do this, you can do it, they would go for it. The poet, he said, لا تعرضن بذكرنا مع ذكرهم ليس الصحيح إذا مشى كالمقعد Don't mention us next to these people. We're like, we're nothing like them. Abu Amr ibn Ala, who was an imam in the Arabic language, he's from the one of the Qurra, one of the Qurra, you know the Qurra, right? From one of the Qurra of the Quran, the Qiraat, he's one of the Imam. He's a muhaddith, scholar of hadith. He was a mufassir. He was a faqih, everything. Do you know what he said? He said, ما نحن في من مضى إلا كبخل في أصول نخل طوالا. Who are we compared to the, old, the people before us? He's from the Salaf. He's saying that what are we compared to those who came before us? We're just like a mushroom. You know what a mushroom is? Under a big tree. That's how we are. So brothers, please give time to learning the Arabic language. Don't take it lightly. You're not going to really understand the Quran. You're not going to understand what the Prophet is saying. Imagine brothers, your father wrote you a letter. He died. And a letter from your father came to you. 
and he wrote it in a language that you can't understand what would you do billahi alaykum huh you will ask somebody to explain it for you right and you would want to know what your father said to you right what about what allah said to you subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran has come to you from your lord and this quran you have been told Ibn Abbas would say, You're gonna find prosperity in this world and the hereafter. Your khair of this world and the khair of the hereafter is connected to this mushaf, this Quran. How do you know how how, how can it happen that you don't understand it? A lot of you, alhamdulillah, are in this country, a Muslim country, find an institute, find somewhere and learn the language. Study this language. It is yours. I'm going to conclude with a Q&A sessions, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaitan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله استغفرك وأتوب إليه. Any questions? Any questions? تفضل. Will I be teaching Arabic? As in like, we we're not in this classes. We're not going to be doing Arabic like that. We're not going to do no grammar, no nothing. We're just going to be speaking about the history, Fakat. Are we all together, brothers? What are we going to be doing? The history. How did grammar start? Who was the first person to place it? What was the story and the history behind it? So you have an overview. And we'll be speaking about these books a bit more details, the difference between them and whatnot. That's what we're going to be doing in this module. But we won't be speaking about grammar in like that. But Kelima has an Arabic program. Has a Arabic program. And inshallah ta'ala, we're working on starting a, a Jerumiya class, inshallah ta'ala, program where we can do this silsila, these five books. Are we all together, brothers? Where we start from a Jerumiya, we finish it. Then we go for Mutamimatul Ayah Jerumiya. And then we go for Lamiyatul Af'al. And then we go for Qatr al Nada wa Bal and then we go to Al Fitri Malik wa Hakada, Tadaruj. We're putting down that inshallah ta'ala. But for this module, we're focusing on the history and the development and the formation of grammar. That's all we're focusing on. It's an introduction. But who would like to study Arabic now? Oh, everybody, alhamdulillah. Some of you still don't want to study it. Who felt that this class increased their want for learning the Arabic language? Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Then put it into action, inshallah ta'ala, okay? And go and start looking up a place where you can learn it. Even if you don't get it, brothers, wallahi, I saw with my two eyes brothers who were in the UK who went on Skype and what's this sir? Huh? there's some teachers in Egypt who you just have to send them money some, there's a little program like that and they will teach you online and we all together and some brothers they graduated and they learned it properly like that so whatever is feasible for you that can work for you the point at the end of the day is that you come with what? the knowledge of this language brothers look think about it like this the Quran is explained by who? A scholar, right? So, when you read, let's say, let's say Ibn Kathir, this is the Quran, okay? Ibn Kathir, what did he do? He explained the Quran, right? He's given you what he understood from the Quran. True or false? Uh, are, we, are we all together, brothers? You're not going to the Quran directly yourself, right? You're going through who? So there's already between you and Ibn Kathir what? The person who doesn't know the Arabic language is another person between you. What is there? This person's understanding of what Ibn Kathir said. <laughs> Are we all together, brothers? So it got longer for you, the problem is. Am I making sense, brothers? So you're reading what somebody understood from Ibn Kathir's kalam 
which that Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he understood from the verse. Am I making sense here, brothers? So this is something you can eliminate. Get rid of this one. For sure, get rid of this one. And as time goes on, with knowledge that increases in your heart, you should go to the Quran yourself and the Sunnah. To become from the Aymat and Mujtahideen, the great scholars who can read, look at the Quran just like Ibn Kathir did. And others did. Are we all together, brothers? But the first step is to learn this language. One statement my teacher said, I never forget it. it sticks on my head. This speech, I have never forgot it. He said something to me. He said to me, 20 years, if somebody was seeking knowledge before you, 20, 20 sana. How many years? 20 years he was seeking knowledge before you. And you started now. He said, if you study Arabic grammar and you learn it, you will catch his 20 years. And wallahi, I believe that. 20 years he's in talabul ilm. But he didn't do the Arabic grammar the way you're going to do it now when you start. If you go for the Arabic grammar straight away, and the Arabic language straight away, and you master it, you'll catch it 20 years. All by studying what? Arabic language. It's the key, brothers. Wallahi. Wallahi, it's the key. Very, very belittled, and it's very it's put down, like in the Arabic language is vital. Very, very important. Very important to give time to learning the Arabic language, learning the Arabic poetry, the Ash'ar, looking into it. Are you with me, brothers? You all know Sheikh, do you guys know Sheikh Salah Ali Sheikh? Have you heard of Sheikh Salah Ali Sheikh? Sheikh Salah Ali Sheikh, he met Sheikh Mahmoud Shakir. You know Sheikh Mahmoud Shakir? You guys have, have you heard of Sheikh Mahmoud Shakir? Yeah? No, that's Ahmed Shakir. That's the brother of Mahmoud Shakir. Mahmoud Shakir, they call him Abu al the father of Arabic. Allahu Akbar. Mahmoud Shakir was an imam in the Arabic language, Allah. He has a kitab called Risalatun ila Thaqafatina. Powerful book. Ala kulli hal, Mahmoud Shakir, rahimahullah, Salah Ali Sheikh met him. Sheikh Salah Ali Sheikh said to him, you know, mashallah, he was amazed with what he saw from who? Mahmoud Shakir's Arabic language. Are you with me, brothers? So he said, what can I do? What can one do? How can one attain this and everything? He said, read Lisan al-Arab. Lisan al-Arab is a what? 20-something volume Arabic, gram, uh, Arabic dictionary. He said, read it. Sheikh said, that's a big book, you know. Sheikh Muhammad Shakir said to him Then Arabic is not for you Look for something else Look for another job He said we read this book More than once with our shuyukh Are you with me brothers? Arabic dictionary Arabic Dictionary Bel Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Shanqita Rahimahullah Ta'ala Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Shanqitiyu He memorized the dictionary Arabic dictionary are you with me, brothers? He memorized the dictionary. When he would do tafsir, he would use the Arabic language on a caliber very high. Are you with me, brothers? Sheikh Muhammad al Amin al Rahimullah ibn Baz's teacher. Mastered the language. Mastered the language. So, brothers, wallahi, it's important that we give time to the language. It's important that we what? It's important that we give time to the Arabic language. There's a little risala I have at home. It's a little risala. It makes you really sad when you look at it. The, the battle against the Arabic language. The book is called وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ All it talks about is فِي مَيْدَانِ الْعِلْمِ It talks about the concept of the Arabic language. Yes. How the West, they pay funds, money, money, money is spent just so the people don't learn the Arabic language. And they learn what? The Western languages. You see an Arab who can't even speak Arabic language. That's what they want to see. So they can put all their ideologies into you. 
Are you with me, brothers? Because then you can watch their movies, you can watch their news, you can watch everything from them, and that's it. They can tell you what you want, and you listen to them, sah? And you're ignorant about what? Your own book, the most important book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. You don't even know it. But you're keeping up track with everything else. May Allah wa ta'ala allow us to holdly, greatly, strongly hold onto our deen and make us understand the value of this language. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruk wa atubu alayhi.